we're going to draw our own umbrella today along with the person standing in the rain. Let's get started. Hello, welcome to Hands on Art. My name is Sandy and today we're going to be a, doing a project called Umbrella. Here's a sample of the project. Now let's go over the supplies for this project. Now I have watercolor paper and watercolor pencils. If you don't have access to that, you can do this on you know regular paper and use colored pencils or markers. But if you have watercolor pencils, it's beautiful and fun and kind of appropriate to use water on an umbrella project. So if you need, pause this video, go get your supplies and meet me back. Okay, let's begin. I have a sample project here and I have my watercolor paper in a portrait orientation like this. And I'm going to start drawing. Now, anytime you want, you can watch a little bit and then you can pause so that you can keep up. Um, but I'm gonna get started. First thing I'm gonna do is figure out about where halfway on this paper is. Now, this is a 12 inch piece of paper. If I have a ruler, I can actually mark, you know, six inches, make a tiny little dot. Um, but you don't have to, you can just eyeball it if you want. And I'm going to make a vertical line that starts a little below the edge of the paper and goes straight down to there. Now you could use the ruler if you want, but you can also freehand it. And then I'm going to go across like this about to make a plus sign number. I don't want it too wide. I want it about as wide as it is tall because we're making an umbrella and they're round, right? So we don't want a rectangular or an odd shaped umbrella. So I think that's pretty close. Maybe I'm a little wide over here. And then that makes four panels of our umbrella. Let's do split each of these in half. Now I could draw straight through but it tends to make funny little triangles in the middle if you miss. So a way to get around that is to start in the middle, right there where the lines cross, and draw a shorter line. Now imagine a circle as you're doing this. Draw a shorter line for to split the umbrella into eight panels. All right, here we go. Now we have eight panels. So our umbrella over here, it looks kind of like an octagon. You could very slightly curve these lines if you wanted, or you could go very straight. You could even use a ruler and connect the lines. So we go through here and connect these lines. Now, I find it easier to move my paper because my hand is easier. You might find the same that as you go, you want to move your paper around. So hopefully yours looks something like this. If it looks too wide or too big or too small, this is a great time to adjust or even turn your paper over because you really need a pretty nice big umbrella to do what we're going to do. Okay, the next thing we're going to draw is our person. And notice, we just have them maybe from the waist down. A lot of their body is covered by the umbrella. Even their arms, because they're holding the umbrella, are hidden. So we're gonna start about in the middle, not super wide because our body's are narrower, and we're gonna come out and make a raincoat or some kind of a jacket. And it's pretty much of a rectangle. I might get a little tiny bit curved on the edges, that'll look more natural, but it's a rectangle. And now let's add the shorts. Now the shorts are basically just two more rectangles. Our jacket's a rectangle, and our shorts are gonna be a rectangle. I'm gonna have them be slightly smaller than the jacket, because jackets are kind of big usually, and we'll have them come out and I'm going to make the corners just a slightly rounded on the shorts too. And then we'll add some legs. 
The legs will be a little bit thinner than the shorts. And now it's time for boots. So for the boots, we want the tops of the boots to be a little bit of a curved line. Think of the opening of a boot, how it's a little bit curved. And I want it a little wider than my person's legs. So see, I've got, it's like a parenthesis, just a little bit of a curved line for each boot. And then I'll draw, this one is almost like a rectangle too, except the heel of the boot is gonna be a little bit round. And the heel of this boot is gonna be a little bit round. But on this boot, I'm gonna put a toe, like the person's foot is sticking out just a little bit. So if I come down, now this word is a big word, it's foreshortened. The shoe is a little, or the foot is a little foreshortened. Really their foot sticks out further, but because of the angle we're looking at it from, it looks short. So that's why the toe of this boot looks a little bit short. Okay. So we got that. Now, if you want, you can do this little line here that looks like the top of the boot goes around to the other side of their legs. Okay. So now what are we missing? We need a puddle. Now, a puddle is an organic shape. We don't have square puddles or round, exactly round puddles or triangle puddles. So we're going to start at about the middle of the person's leg here. And we're just gonna let our pencil make a bit of a wiggly puddle like this. And we're gonna come around in front and we're gonna wiggle some more. Now it's kind of important that where it touches the leg on this side looks like it kind of matches up on the other side. That'll look like the puddle is in front of them and behind them. Okay, so if you need to pause the video to make your puddle, remember you can pause the video anytime. Okay, now I think we'll do one last thing. If you have a ruler, you can use it. It might be nice. Maybe about one third of the way up the paper, meaning if I break my paper into three sections, about this bottom one, that's where I'm going to draw a horizon line. And that's just separates the sky from the land. So I'm going to come over here. And when I get to my person, I'm going to lift my pencil up, hop over and go to the other side. It doesn't even have to go off the paper. And it tricks our eye into thinking that now we have ground and now we have sky. Before our person looked a little like they were floating. Now they don't. Okay, now I'm gonna put down my pencil and I'm gonna get out my ultra fine Sharpie. And I'm gonna go over all the lines that I did with pencil in Sharpie. So go ahead, you do that too, and then I'll meet you back. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find our eraser and we're gonna erase the pencil lines that we can see. Okay, if you get it all cleaned off, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna use our Sharpie and we're gonna just directly do Sharpie instead of starting with a pencil. And we wanna add our patterns to our umbrella. So you can pick whatever patterns you want and I'll show you some patterns and you can look at the samples that you probably have um, on the table with you and you can decide which ones you like. So on this little section, I'm gonna make it stripes and I'm gonna just keep going on like that one line there. The only thing you need to keep in mind is that when you hit this edge, you stop. Don't go over the edge with your stripes. There we go. And if you want, you could make it more, add a little something and maybe, you know, add some polka dots in every other stripe. So I'm going to skip a stripe and I'll add some polka dots. 
Okay, speaking of polka dots, let's make some polka dots in the next section. So these ones, I'm gonna make kind of medium-sized polka dots. And you could make little tiny ones, you could make really big ones, but I'm gonna make kind of medium. Another thing you can do if you wanna be tricky is you can imagine if this was a piece of fabric and we attached it, you might have only a half a polka dot some places. So you can make a half a polka dot. Just don't go over the edge. Let's do an asterisk. How's that for a big word? But basically, I make one line, two lines, three lines. One, two, kind of like letter X with another line through it. Letter X with a line. Almost looks like a snowflake. Okay, for this section, maybe I just make triangles within triangles. So I'm gonna try to make a smaller triangle inside like this. There we go. Maybe we can do some checkers. So I'll make it striped again like this one. Now you notice I'm turning my paper. That just makes it easier for me, even though the person's upside down. They don't mind. Okay, so now I'll come out and make like a checkerboard. How about tiny little polka dots? I'll do them on the opposite side of the big ones. Make lots of tiny polka dots. Okay, we could do moons. So to do a moon, I'm gonna do a half a circle and another half circle, a half a circle, and another half circle. Okay, how about some wavy lines? I'm gonna make like this, bumps, and then I'll make bumps that match. It keeps getting narrower. Okay, so now we're done with our patterns up here. And let's add a little something to our puddle. Now, if you want, you could even do a pattern here. It doesn't have to be realistic. It could You could have a polka dotted puddle. But I was thinking we could try to draw, if a raindrop hit a puddle, it might make some concentric circles. A concentric circle is one where there's a circle around a circle. So imagine if a raindrop hit, it would make little concentric circles. So we could do that. Add a few, it's just sprinkling. We don't have a whole bunch of them. Maybe one more. And then just to make the puddle look like it has some difference in depth or a little bit of a pattern to it, I'm gonna mimic or kind of copy the line, the outside line on the inside. Maybe I'll go around some of these shapes a little bit with some shorter lines. Now again, you can do yours however you like, but this is just an idea. Maybe I'll show you a couple of other ideas too. There we go. All right, I think we're done with our puddle. And I am going to put my, well, you might wanna put your name down here. I usually put my initials. Um, so I'll do S, J, A, and the year is 22. Okay.
Now it's time to color. So I'm gonna put away my, oh, you know what? One more thing you could do if you wanted, let's give our person some socks. So I'm gonna draw a line and another line and we'll have some little, this looks like the band that holds your socks up. And if you wanted, you could give their socks polka dots or something too. I think my person's gonna have polka dotted socks. Okay, so now I'm gonna put away my pen and I'm gonna find my watercolor pencils. So yours might look a little bit different, but here's mine. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna color the whole thing dry and then we're gonna add some water. We'll kind of make a little rain of our own today. So you can color yours however you want. I'm going to suggest when you do these sections, you color them one color to start. We're going to do something a little bit magic. I'll show you. Um, so maybe you want to watch me for a little bit and then color yours. Ha <laughs> ha, no, I can't really color this fast. I'm going to speed it up so you don't get bored watching. You don't have to color very carefully um, because when we go over it with the water, it's going to make it nice and smooth and you'll be able to fill in any little gaps in color at that step. Okay, so now we have our umbrella. I think we're going to want to color our person here. Um, my pencil needs sharpening and I want to show you something. A lot of sharpeners have two holes. If yours has two, use the big one. Even though your pencil's skinny, it makes it harder to break because it won't be quite as pointy when you use the big one. All right, he's going to have a red jacket. Or she. We can't really tell, huh? Okay, now I'm going to do this part here. Now you could make it green like grass, but I'm going to make it black like it's asphalt, like they're, you know, maybe in a parking lot or a road. And this is a, a fun thing to learn. If you want to do a big area, you can hold your pencil kind of almost sideways against the paper and you can do a big area more quickly. So... I'm gonna do, and notice I'm not getting super close to my puddle. I'll fix that when I use my water. So I'm gonna leave it a little bit of a gap there and that is just fine. And we'll do our puddle. I'm gonna do a light blue puddle and I'm gonna add dark blue later, I'll show you. But right now I'm just gonna color it all light blue. Now, I still have a sky that I want to do, and I'm going to do the sky in dark blue, and I'm going to kind of go at an angle like this, thinking of how rain would look. So, I'm going to color, Ooh, I think this guy needs some sharpening. Same like on the asphalt, I'm not going to get super close, because I don't want to get blue on my person or my umbrella. So now it's all colored with our watercolor pencils. And now let's watch the magic. I have a brush here. This one's called a Filbert. Almost sounds like somebody's name, doesn't it? Philip or Filbert. But a Filbert brush has a little rounded edge. If you have a flat one, that's fine too. And I have a little cup of water. And one thing to remember is to always rinse your brush if you're changing colors. So if I do red and then red, I'm fine. Here, let's do red, I'll show you. Now look how nicely that red smears. So I didn't have to color it in perfectly. And look how beautifully the water fills in that space. And now I'll do his boots, because they're also red. And that way I don't have to rinse my brush right away. I'll do 
do these red boots and it looked like we got a red section on his umbrella. And when I'm done with all my red, I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna wipe it a little on the side of the container. That way we don't get our paper too wet because when we get our paper really wet, it curls a lot. So you want enough water to smear things around, but you don't want your paper so wet that it curls up. Look at how vibrant and yellow that yellow gets when I add water. It's like magic. Now, because I didn't put the color on very heavy in this guy, it looks a little streaked, but I kind of really like that because it kind of makes me think of the raindrops coming down on a rainy day and the wind blowing them so they don't come down just straight. Okay, one last thing on the first round of color is my asphalt. Now, one thing I like about this brush is if I lay it this way, it's fat, but if I turn it sideways like this, I can do a very skinny, um, careful line where if I don't want to get on something, see how I can go around the edge and be a little more careful. Okay, that's awesome. Now let's put away our brush. We can get a little rinse out. We'll use it at the very end, maybe. And we'll go on to the next step. Okay, now this is very fun and magical, if you ask me. So we have our base picture here. Oh, I forgot to color this, finish this purple one. We have this base picture, and we've colored all of the sections solid. But if we want now, we can go add some more colors. And this is what we're going to do. So we're going to, let's see, I'm going to take this green and I'm going to dip it in water. And I'm going to color on top of our, see, I'm going to make like a checkerboard. I'm going to color on top of other colors. And as long as it's pretty wet, it makes a nice dark mark. And as it starts to get dry, you're going to need to dip it again. So I'm going in here and I'm doing every other square on top. And I'm making like a nice little checkerboard with green and yellow. Okay, now let's do these stripes. I'm going to pick a color that's similar but darker maybe. And I'm going to do every other stripe. So let's see how this works. Here, let's try picking the same color on the blue but make some darker blue polka dots. Because when you dip the pencil tends to go quite a bit darker. See how that works? Okay, you can join me. Dip your pencil and go on top of colors to add a new color. I've got dark blue that I'm using on top of the light blue. Okay, I think I'm done. Now, if you wanted, you could add, you know, something else to the clothing as well, but I feel like it looks pretty darn good. This is optional, completely optional, but I bought this paint and it's metallic and it's pearl metallic. And I squirted a little bit in this container and I'm going to use my paintbrush and add just little hints of it. Now, I don't want a lot of it because it'll just stir everything up and make it messy. But I'm going to use the skinny side of my brush and I'm going to add little hints near where I have my rain lines or in the sky and it'll give just a little bit of shine to make things look wet. And then, of course, I like to add a little on some contours in my puddle. Don't add very much. Just a couple little dabs here and there will do you. Um, 
and I think it'll add a fun little sheen and a little highlight to what we've done. Okay, when you're done, don't forget to rinse your brush out and you're done. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had fun. I know I did. And go have an art-filled week.